We are continuing with the last segment of chapter 3 from the double life of Pocahontas. I'll be finishing uh, chapter 3. Uh, as I was reading last time, and we were interrupted by my cat, uh, we had uh, uh, just learned that uh, Governor Dale, who was going all over the countryside killing as many Indians as he could, uh, was meeting very strong resistance from uh, an Indian chief by the name of Namatanau, uh, and uh, he told his people that he had very strong magic and he dressed up in all kinds of feathers and was in fact called Jack of the Feathers. And uh, so the English were busy fighting him, but continuing to expand uh, their settlements in this area. So let me continue reading uh, chapter 3 and uh, Finishing up, just to make sure that my timer is working, just a minute. Okay. All right, the timer is going. I don't want to go over 10 minutes. By the spring of 1613, there were more than 700 settlers in Virginia. At least 30 were women. The town of Henrico was completed, and although a few Indian tribes had submitted to the English, Powhatan held firm. As for Pocahontas, the English at Jamestown hadn't seen her for four years. She was 17 years old now and may no longer have been living with her husband. Perhaps he had died or perhaps they had not been happy together. In any case, in April 1613, she was alone in the Potomac country, staying at the home of the Potomac chief when Samuel Argall arrived on a trading mission from Jamestown. Quite accidentally, Argall learned that Pocahontas was nearby, and he knew that he had stumbled on a prize, a chance at last to break Powhatan's will. All he had to do was kidnap Pocahontas and hold her as a hostage. Then Powhatan would give in fast enough. Then he'd return the weapons and captives that the settlers had been trying so hard and so long to get from him. Then he would make peace. Argall was too crafty a man to think he could go to Pocahontas and take her by force. No, she must be lured to his ship. She must walk on board of her own free will, not suspecting a trap had been laid for her until she was caught. Argall sought his old friend Japizaz, brother of the Potomac chief, and asked for help. Knowing how greedy Japizaz was for English goods, Argall showed him a handsome copper kettle, which would be his if he got Pocahontas onto his ship. Japazaz was willing to do anything for a kettle like that. His wife, too. So the next day they told Pocahontas that there was an English ship in the river. Wouldn't she like to go with them and take a look? It had been a long time since Pocahontas had seen an English ship. Yet she may have hesitated. Just look. Oh, yes, just look. Japazaz's wife was such a willful, loud-voiced woman, it would have been hard for Pocahontas to refuse her, even if she had wanted to. In any case, she did go, and there was the ship, just like the ships at Jamestown. Its white wings were folded and tied to their tree trunks, the way they always were when ships were at rest. But as soon as Japazaz's wife saw the ship, she was no longer content just to look. Oh, no, she must go on board, she cried. She must see more. She and her husband had rehearsed what they would do, and they did it well. She wailed and begged. He scolded and refused to let her go. What was she thinking of, he asked. It would not be proper for one woman to go on a ship that held only men. Still, Japazaz's wife carried on, making such a fuss that Japazaz finally threw up his hands. If she must go, he shouted then, then let her go. But she must take Pocahontas so there would be two women together. By this time, Captain Argall had undoubtedly come ashore and invited the three of them to eat with him on his ship. But Pocahontas held back, knowing that her father wouldn't want her on an English ship, eating with an English captain. But there was no end to the commotion that Japazaz's wife was raising. On and on. Nothing would do but that she must eat on the ship. 
And at last, Pocahontas gave in, perhaps simply out of embarrassment to keep her friend quiet. Of her own free will, she walked into the trap that had been set for her, and unsuspecting, she sat down at the captain's table. Of course, she didn't know that all during the meal, Japazaws was kicking Samuel Argall under the table. Sly little kicks. See, he seemed to be saying, she's here, don't forget the kettle. After eating, Pocahontas was taken to the gunner's room for a rest, and in her absence, Japazaws and his wife were given their kettle. But Pocahontas couldn't rest. Once she was alone, she became more and more uneasy about what she'd done. She couldn't be here, and she wouldn't stay, not a minute longer. She went on deck, but when she started to go ashore, she found her way blocked. She was not going ashore, she was told. She was going to Jamestown. No, she wouldn't go. She couldn't go. But she was surrounded. No matter which way she turned, the English were there to stop her. She protested. She argued. She cried. According to the report of the man who kept the records for Jamestown, Japazaws and wife, pretending to have no part in the plot, cried right along with her for a little while. Then, with a kettle and other toys, they went merrily on shore. And Pocahontas went to Jamestown. So this is chapter three. And uh, listen to it as many times as you need to.